to be baptized. And when you follow this ministry, a lot of people think we won't minister. You know, we want people just to follow us. No, you've got to submit to leadership. Amen. 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 Now, it's quiet in here, amen. but can I have an amen? amen. You've got to amen. submit to leadership. Yes. Yeah. 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 Amen. Sure you do. Yes. Yeah. Well, well, then I won't go. Well, you'll be outside. All right. Because you submit to leadership. Yes. Yeah. Because in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, all of these scriptures are uh, moving pretty rapidly here. The Bible said they all passed through the cloud, all passed uh, through uh, the sea, and were all baptized under Moses. How were they baptized uh, uh, to Moses? Why, well, it's, it's because they believe what he said. And when he put the rod in the water, the waters uh, heaped on the other side. They went through dry shod, and if they didn't believe what he said, they stayed on the other side. That meant they were baptized into Moses, and they were baptized into the authority that God gave that man. Right. Because he was called to lead that people out, and they submitted to that. And the Holy Spirit uh, let it happen. Though it wasn't a gift, the Holy Spirit directed him uh, to do it. Holy men of old spake, as they were moved on by the Holy Ghost. And so... Um, so when you, when you come uh, to Christ, you find the body of Christ. He said, for as many as you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. And when you're baptized into Christ, that means that uh, the fragrance of Christ, the, uh, the joy of Christ, the love of Christ, uh, all of the attributes of Christ, all that he taught uh, is in you. And it's, it's, it, it's a part of you. And so you're baptized into that, and you take that on. And you're no longer clothed uh, in your own righteousness, but you're clothed in his righteousness. And so when I come to church in 95, Psalms 95, he said, oh, let us sing. Now, do we have scriptures to sing in church? Yes, well, here's sir. one. Yes, yes, sir. Sir. Yeah. See, it says, oh, come and sing. Yeah. Well, I don't want to sing. Yes. Well, then you're, then you're violating the Bible. I, I don't I don't sing well. Well, you you still violate the Bible. I was in a meeting many years ago and a brother emptied my building when he tried to sing. Amen. Amen. But he couldn't sing, but he knew God said sing. And he knew the Lord said sing. Amen. 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 But you're commanded to sing. Well, I don't want to sing. Well, the, but you'll never get, you'll never find him unless you do what the Bible says. It says, come and let us sing unto the Lord. Amen. Amen. Can you say hallelujah? Hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Say hallelujah again. Hallelujah. Singer back there, brother way back there, sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's singing to the Lord. Say hallelujah. See, you got to sing. And as you move through this, these scriptures, I won't stop on every point. He said, let us therefore make a joyful noise yes. to the rock yes. of our salvation. Oh, yes. I wonder if we can make a joyful noise here today. I wonder if somehow somebody could reach way down inside in a world of negativity, in a world where everything's going wrong, can you still be joyful? Yes. Come on now. In a world where everything is wrong, nothing wrong. And you'll still, you can still see me do it. But I tried not to. I remember, I remember, uh, I got in a habit as a young man, put my hands in my pocket. Yeah. It just feels good. You know, from the time you're a little boy, you know, where you, you put your hands in your pocket. Yeah. Uh, but I don't want to come to worship with my hands in my pocket. Right. Yeah. I got to get my hands out of my pocket. Yes, sir. I got to get them up. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Yeah. I got to get them up. Yeah. Because I want to obey the Bible. I, I, I want to obey my Bible. I want to learn to get my hands up. You know, if we'd all work together, this load wouldn't be so hard around me. You know, if we'd all just begin to, to just, just somehow let God help us, it wouldn't be so heavy. If we'd make a joyful noise when all is wrong in a turbulent world, in a world of sorrow, 
in a world of suffering. Yes. How many of your families have suffered the last few days? Yes. But I was blessed to see Sister Jan pull through this trial. Yes. I was blessed to see Brother Lee come yes. through the trial. Yes. I was blessed to see the Wallace family pull through this trial yes. because God is a rock. Hallelujah. Yes. He's a rock. Yes. You can depend on him. Amen. said, now let us come into his presence. Now notice these scriptures. Notice these scriptures. How do you come into his presence? What do you mean, come into his presence? Did you know that when you come into his presence, you come into his presence, now here's your second witness with thanksgiving. I, I am to be thankful. I, I, I'm to come in his presence with thanksgiving. Now watch this. And make a joyful noise. I, I said that. And sing with psalms. And for the Lord, now look, look at verse 3. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. Now look here for that. That's a revelation there. Yes, amen. See, that, 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 then you move from thanksgiving, then you move from praise, and you worship him, you begin to see his holiness. Yes. You begin to recognize his holiness. Oh, yeah. You begin to, there's something in you that you go beyond just the outward. Yeah. And now you're not on your knees, as, as I was saying, three dimensions. Uh, even, you know, what did Jesus say? He said, ask. And, you, and he said, ask. And, and what did he say? Seek and knock. Ask and, and, and seek and knock. And they see, when you pray, you first come to him and you ask. And, and some people stay there. They, they stay in the asking. And they get on their knees and they ask. And they ask. And they ask. Lord, I ask you to bless me. I ask you to help my family. I ask you to bless my mama, my daddy. Oh, God, don't forget my aunt. Oh, God, don't forget my uncle. Lord, little Johnny. Oh, God, little Johnny. Oh, God. And they ask and they ask it, but they're not worshiping. No. See, see, that's not worship. That's asking. Yes. But then there, there is another thing in the spirit that my spirit, man, begins to reach out Hallelujah. for something. Hallelujah. My spirit begins to want to contact God. Yes. I begin to want more than just the outward. I begin to seek God. Yes. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I don't want to lose you. Uh, but see, you seek God. And you begin to ask God. And then you go to seeking Him. You seek His favor. You don't seek riches. You seek His favor. You don't seek money. You seek His favor. You don't seek anything but His favor. Amen. Then when you begin, when your spirit man begins to knock, then you want to worship Him. See, I, here's, here's how the Holy Spirit uh, taught it to me. I don't, want to, I don't want to get carnal. But I can stand here and I can tell you all day how to love your wife. But unless, unless something inside of you, the emotions, the 52 emotions that are housed in you, unless you're, unless something in you loves your wife, you'll never really love your wife. That's right, man. I can tell you to love God, but until there's something in you, that he has created in there Come on, brother. that he breathed upon Come on. and when he put his spirit in you Come on. when he began to draw you Come on, when he began to bring you yes. when the walls came down when the doors came down when all that was going on in your life you had a heart to seek after him you loved him and now you're worshiping him Praise God. see there's something down that worships him Hallelujah. I, I can tell you here's how you love your wife if you don't love your wife you'll never know how to love your wife Right, man. And I can't define to you how I love my spouse. But I can tell you this. I can tell you that there's something way down in my heart. Come on, brother. Way down in my spirit oh, yes. that loves her. And there's something way I can, you can pick on my children. And you're going to get in a world of trouble. Because there's something way down in there. I didn't put it there. I didn't plant it there. But when I held them in my hands for the first time. How many know what I'm talking about? There was something released inside of me that loved that child. I've given them my last dollar. I pulled money out of my wallet that I didn't have. I helped them through scrapes. 
I stood with him when nobody else could stand with him. I love him. I'm telling you, and that's, that's so flimsy, and I'm not even adequate uh, to tell you, but that's a small part of how to love God. Way down on the inside, there's nobody can take God away from me. There's nobody that can dislodge God from my life. There's nobody that can turn me away from God because he's my rock and he's my salvation and he's my life and he's the strength of my life. Hallelujah. I worship him. I found a dimension. I found a dimension. How many are with me today? How many know what I'm saying? Way down in there. Way down in there. I worship him. I worship him. And I want to tell you this too. There are a lot of changes that God is going to make. There are some dispensational changes that God is going to make. Oh, I wish I had time. I, I don't know. It's just, it's just hard sometimes uh, to get it over. But God is getting ready to change the church as we know it. God is getting ready. And I know you get tired of hearing it. But we're on the threshold of the winding up of the church age. We're winding it up. We're about to enter a kingdom. And only kingdom-minded people will go with it. Brother Don and I was talking the other day. You know, there's a lot of people. They think that uh, they think that when the preachers get together that we gossip just like everybody else. That's not true. No. We talk about God. We talk about hidden scriptures. Yes, sir. We talk about the things of God. We talk about uh, this this move. And how many have been listening to the church is not the kingdom and the kingdom's coming? How many have been listening to that? Yes. How many won't understand that? Right. Without a revelation, you won't understand it. Right. Without a revelation, you won't understand it. Amen. Jesus Christ himself said, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. Right. Amen. You think the church was everything. But he also said more about the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God than he ever did the church. All right. yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. And when it's true, he said, I'm going to build my church. Yeah. How many know he's done a good job of building the church? All right. He built the church. He yeah. said, upon this rock, I'm going to build it. All right. Amen. And he put 12 yeah. stones in the ground. Yeah. And 12 men put them through boot camp. Yeah. Put them through every possible thing they could go through. And they built the church. <laughs> but when you begin to tell people all of this, well, they look to, you know, they, they, don't, they don't get it. But if you'll notice in your Bible, if you'll look at Acts chapter 14, if the church is the kingdom and the kingdom is the church, then what do we do with some of these passages? I don't know what time it is, but when I've been up too long, pull my coattail, please. I don't have a watch. Uh, or, you know, just to, I don't even know. But I want to just hit a couple more scriptures and I'll get... Uh, I'll get out of the way. Look, um, uh, Acts chapter 14, I believe it is. Paul had made a missionary journey. And if the church is the kingdom, and the kingdom is the church, and if Christ came to build the church, and the church was to come to an end, and the kingdom is to supersede it, then where are the scriptures on it? Where, where are some of the scriptures that uh, will help us uh, to get into it? How do I get into it? Where do I make it? And the Lord's making a transition. Oh, yes. And he never made a move that he didn't start with his word. And never made a move that he didn't start with his messenger. And he never made a move unless there were things that accompanied that move that followed that move as well. Did you know the songs are changed when the dispensation changes? Yes, sir. I don't think you heard that. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. You know that songs are changed when the dispensation changes. Yeah. And I, I made a study. And every time God makes a move, Every time God decides to make a move, there are songs that accompany that move. Yes, I believe that. Amen. Martin Luther. God raised Martin Luther up. God was able to raise him up. God raised him up because he was a pivotal man. God raised him up because the Bible predicted that he would be one of the ones that, that he would raise up. Here are some scriptures. You have to augment them here. You have to put them in. I don't know if they can, they can get it fast enough, but in Micah, the little book of Micah, by chapter 5, in the book of Micah, it talks about two great leaders, two shepherds, one a false shepherd, the other one uh, is a true shepherd. It talks about Bethlehem, 
One of the only places where Bethlehem is prophesied uh, uh, there. And it says, so you people among all the nations of the world, get out of thee, God. I will bring a ruler, and he'll bring someone to lead you. And it shows there that, that he was to lead his people. And then he contrasted it there by talking about a false worshiper. And there would be a false shepherd that would be raised up. That's the Pope of Rome. And that's, a, uh, that's the world uh, coming to the end, the religious world, falling behind one world system. But it also said, in a little part of that, right back of that, said there would be eight principal men raised up. But who are these eight principal men? Who are these eight principal leaders that, uh, that, uh, that this prophet is prophesying about? Who are these eight principal men? And I began to search that like I had many things. I prayed my way through most of these scriptures. And God has helped us uh, with some of these scriptures. But the Bible said in, is it uh, 2 Peter uh, chapter 2? He said, whereby are given unto us exceedingly great and precious promises. He said that by these promises you might be made partakers of his divine nature. Having escaped the world, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the world, uh, having come out of the world. And he said, add to your faith. Now look up here at me. Martin Luther was, was a principal man. Martin Luther raised up the message of faith when there was no message of faith. See, there, was, there, are, there, are, there are eight steps there in 2 Peter 2. And there are eight principal men in Micah 5. And here in this scripture, he said, uh, for add to your faith, Martin Luther was, was crawling up the steps to uh, Wittenberg, uh, Germany. And he was there to do penance. And as he crawled up the steps, the God of heaven, you'd have to say it was God. You'd have to say God did something unusual. Something mighty happened to this great prophet of God. He was raised up by God. But it's true, he was a priest. He was touched by something greater than himself. And he got a revelation. What was it? The dust would live by faith. And he got that revelation and he began to be the channel that faith came through in all of the world. Yes. See, faith. And then add to your faith virtue. Praise God. All right. Who, who was that? Uh, the Wesley boys. Yes. John and Charles Wesley were men that held uh, for holiness, that believed in holiness. And without holiness, they said it was impossible uh, to, uh, to see God. And so they held for that. And they, they, they ushered in virtue and holiness into the church when everybody uh, didn't have it. And I, this, they can, these can be lengthy, and I don't want to do that. And then, what was the other one? Knowledge. And in 1900, in the 1900s, God raised up William Souders, a man of God on the Ohio River. And... Um, Saved him in the bottom of the old gospel boat. Now, I preach this because we have young people here. And Brother Terry, they don't know this message. And Brother Don, they don't know where we come from. Brother Hank, they don't have any idea what they're a part of. Would you like to know what you're a part of? What God has allowed to happen here? And who brought it about? First of all, it was brought about by God. And by a divine revelation that God gave a man. I believe he was a principal man. I believe there were eight principal men in Micah 5 that he prophesied. I won't go through all of them. I, I have them in, uh, in my cranium, but I don't think you'd be able to handle all of them by the time I get through. I, I, I'm afraid you'd be like you because you'd fall out of the third row loft. But um, here, here's what he did. He brought a message. And, it, and God laid him down, smote him on the ground, Put him in the, or that is, in the bottom of the boat. And he said, I want you to preach my gospel. I want you to preach my gospel. He said, Lord, he said, I, I, I don't know how. He said, you don't have to know how. I'll teach you how uh, to preach my gospel. And he planted knowledge in the earth. He put a knowledge that's still in our hearts today. He put a truth that's still in our hearts today. He was able to plant something sure enough and deep enough that it allowed Brother Jim Roberts. I, I, was, uh, I was privileged to know Brother Jim Roberts. Sister Euphemia and Brother Gerald. I don't know how many are still around that actually sat under. Sister Willie and Sister May back here. They sat under Jim Roberts. And this man came to this city. 
That's why I don't like it when people talk about the church. God showed him this. He showed him this city in a dream. He showed him this city. He showed him the very house that he was to live in. And he moved into that house. God absolutely let him be led of God to open a door. He tied blocks around his wife, tied blocks that he made from a mold to build the original portion of this building right here. Or that is over there. It was across the street, wasn't it? And she tied him on the bottom. See, look, look, I'm telling you, you've got a heritage. You've got a wonderful heritage. You've got a lot to praise God for. You've got a lot to be thankful for. There's a wonderful message that's been planted by men of God in this place. How many know he's still talking to men of God? He's still talking to men of God. Brother uh, Petro, is that your name? Brother Petro, the brother next to you. Huckle. Huckle. Brother, you didn't just come into a fly-by-night mushroom movement here. This is not a little mushroom that mushroomed up overnight. It wasn't there yesterday. Now it's there. You came into something that was planted by God. That was here, put here by divine revelation. Men of God so gave their life. Whether you like it or not, some of us are pouring our lives out. We're standing. You're here today. And we had a choice. I had a choice. I could have stayed home today. But I chose to be here with you. I love you. I chose to be here with you. How many chose to be in the house of God today? You got a choice. I chose to be here. Well, it's because you wanted to preach. Come and watch me. See how many times I'm here and I never say anything. Just, just, I, just, I, I still choose to be here. If I never spoke for a year, I still choose to be here. But this is where he's planted his name. This is where his name is. This is what he's planted right here. I, I, I come, I come where he's planted his name. Praise his wonderful name. I'm, I'm saying something today. God uh, is, is moving in a powerful way here. And look, and look, Jesus planted something, and that church was sure, and he added something, and he put something in it, and he took that remnant and put them in the upper room. There was 120 of them. What did he say? In John chapter 12, verse 24, it said, Jesus said, except a corn of wheat fall on the ground and die. He said, it abideth alone. He said, it will abide alone. But he said, if it dies, he said it will bring forth fruit, and the fruit would remain. All right. How many grains of, what is the average, the average wheat stalk, how many grains of corn is on the average wheat stalk? You want the answer? 120. 120, Yeah. This is amazing stuff. You know what? How many is... What, how many would you say is the average amount of hair on your head, Sister Cherry? The average amount on normal human beings' heads. And I, 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 let, me, let me just say that. On, uh, on, you know, of course, you have it, whether you're bald or not, it's still there. The follicles are still there. There's 144,000. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you don't believe me? I believe you. Yeah. Yeah. 144,000 on the average head. 144,000. 120 grains went to the upper room. That's all they needed. He didn't need 122. He didn't need 118. He needed 120. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and he built a church. And he put that church in the upper room. And then when in uh, Paul's ministry, I, I want to close with this. Let me give you two scriptures on the kingdom. Uh, how, why is it that the church is a kingdom? What happened? Why is not the church called the kingdom? Are there any scriptures that show uh, that the church is not the kingdom and the kingdom is not the church? Well, here's one. Will you help me with this? This is uh, uh, Acts chapter 14, Paul returning on a missionary journey here. Help me find it. The glasses are not helping me. I think verse 21, I believe it is. Um, and when they had preached the gospel to that city, he taught many and returned uh, 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 that he returned again. And he came uh, into Iconium and uh, into Antioch. And look at verse 22 now. Confirming the souls of the disciples. 
In other words, they were already saved. They were already in the church. Yeah. When Paul came back to the church, these souls were already in the church. Yeah, amen. But he made a return visit to Iconium and Antioch. When he came back to Iconium and Antioch, there were, the Bible said he confirmed the souls and exhorting them to continue in the faith that we must through much tribulation enter in the kingdom. Now they were in the church. They were already in the church. But he said, you through much tribulation enter into the kingdom. So if the church is the kingdom, then Paul missed it right here. Right, amen. See? Amen. See, Paul missed it. If the church is the kingdom and the kingdom is the church, then Paul missed it right there. But he didn't. They were already in the church. But he, he, he told them that through much tribulation, you're going to enter into the kingdom. Now, one more, one more verse, and I'll, uh, and I'll close with this. Look at Daniel chapter 2. If you go to Daniel chapter 2, uh, you'll see this man image. Uh, there's, a, uh, um, uh, there's an image there. Uh, and it's a, um, um, uh, it's a metallic in image. Uh, it's a man of metal. It's a man made of metal. And, these, and if you notice, uh, these metals here uh, begin to digress. He begins to show lesser value than each one. There was a little bit lesser value in the different metals that uh, that was in there. Is everybody tired? Can you want me to uh, stop or can I, uh, can I finish this? The, um, if, you'll, if you'll look in this metallic image there, he, he starts with a head of gold. And uh, the head of gold, of course, uh, was Babylon. There were two other kingdoms uh, prior to that. John the Revelator picked them up. It's Egypt, Assyria, uh, Syria, um, um, Babylon, Medo Persia, Greece, and Rome, and then finally uh, Papal Rome, making up seven heads and uh, ten horns. But Daniel, he just begins with a kingdom that God uh, let him be a part of, uh, that, that, that uh, he was a eunuch in. And he began with a head of gold. And then it digressed. You, you see the metal, the value of the metal began to change. It went from gold to silver. And that was these other kingdoms. I won't go into uh, to all of the kingdoms and how it changed and how God raised up Cyrus and how that Tyrus was a part of that and how that Jeremiah uh, got prophecy of that many years before God was able uh, to do that and how that through Cyrus and there was a restoration made and we have uh, Esther, we have uh, Nehemiah and um, uh, these men going back and restored back during uh, that part, it goes from the head of gold and finally the metallic image moves down. And then we get to the dark part of that. And that's, that's the Roman Empire. That's, that's when Christ came down in the loin period uh, of that. And then we get the two legs. They separate uh, there in the man image. And there's an eastern part of it. And there's a, then there's a western part of it. I won't deal with that even at the end of that. Uh, the two popes should, stood and shook their fist at one another in the eastern part of it and the western part of it. But then he comes down to our day and, and he's down somewhere near the 40th verse there uh, of Daniel 2. And we move uh, from the uh, down to the legs. The legs, uh, uh, the important thing to know about the legs is that they were part iron or, or was that the feet that was part iron? Uh, uh, yes, okay. It was the feet part of that. And no longer was the iron, which was the, the Roman government, the, the strength of the Roman government that had fought against and come against the, uh, the, the uh, church. And, and then down in the feet members, now that's coming where we are. And, and it's mixed with iron and clay. And everybody knows we're, li we're living in the most mixed up world that's ever been. Right, amen. Can I have an amen that's mixed amen. up? Amen. Amen. I was looking at Bay News 9 and they're parading in the streets and, yes. and uh, advocating. And, and you look, uh, God is getting ready to shake this world. Amen. The judgments of God are coming upon America. Amen. God is going to judge the nation. Amen. I appreciated Brother John Zonneville last night. I appreciated his words. Yes, amen. appreciated him coming. And yes. He knew our pastor was gone. Uh, that, that, that made me feel good. Let me go down on record. Say, I thought that was pretty good of him to come. Yes. I was glad to see him. I grew up with these men. 
These are my friends. These are, they are, these are my gospel buddies. I stand with them. And I love these men of God. You know, I, I'm not like a lot of people. I really do love men of God. You know somebody that loves this Bible and studies the Bible? I can't, I can't wait to get near them. All right. Amen. Yes. Yes. I'll have time for Reader's Digest and uh, McCall Magazine. Oh my, God. No. my favorite soap opera. Yeah. Uh -uh. I don't have time for any of that. No. I have time for this book. Right All right. Here. Amen. I got time for this book. <clears throat> Somebody on the grounds yeah. wanted cable not too long ago and <laughs> want to know if the church have provided cable. Uh -huh. And I said, yeah, we do. We do. They call one and answer. Little boy said, Brother Lonnie, my wife, but that is my mama wanted to know if if um uh, if the church uh, provides cable. I said we do. Yeah. We have 66 channels in the book that uh, that we bring. I'll bring you the remote. He said, Okay, mama, he's going to bring us the remote. I took one of these Bibles out of the boxes back there, walked it over there, knocked on the door, and said, Here's your remote. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> channels right here. Yeah. You want to watch a vision? Yeah. You can tell a vision when you read this book. Yeah. You can tell a vision when you get a hold of God. Oh, I can tell a vision up here today because I've studied the book. I can tell a vision because I was able to get a hold of something right here. Hallelujah. I was able to tell a vision because I love God. Hallelujah. Amen. And I, I'm for. I'm, I'm not against television. I, I'm not. I just. I just thought it was humorous. I just. I just thought it was a. It was a good time. Yeah. It was a good time to to show. Hey, the main reason we're here is to worship and love God. Amen. 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 We're here to give Him honor. We're here to give Him praise. And I don't mean that in any bad way. You have to know me. There's a lighter side to me. You know, we can't all be the same. I'm a little bit different. I got a little lighter side to me. I try to bring it back around. But don't ever estimate whether I love God or not or whether I'm serious about God. I'm dead serious when it comes to this holy thing of God. Amen. Amen. I take the edge off of it once in a while. But I love God. Don't make a mistake. I've given my life. See, we're, we're living in, in this world that's so confused. They don't even know what's right. Right. Amen. Amen. A lot of people don't know this. Hallelujah. You drive down the road. You go past Applebee's. I won't tell the church. I won't point it out. But if somebody don't stand for truth, who's it going to be? Amen. If the church don't raise the flag up right now, right. who's going to raise it up? Amen. Right. Amen. 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 We, we must stand for God. Amen. Well, I won't get too plain. Hallelujah. But on the bottom of some signs, you'll see it. Even some of the churches, the rainbow symbol. I don't have to explain to you what that is. That rainbow symbol is showing up in churches. It's showing up on church signs now. And and but but look, we must raise up a holy standard. We must stand for God. We must believe in, in God raising a church and bringing out of the church something that's prepared for Him in the kingdom. What time is it? Have I gone over? All right. All right, this is it. The, uh, the, uh, and in this man image, in this man image, there, he, he moves down to verse 44. I believe it's verse 44. And it said that in the days of these kings, that's where we're at. In the days of these kings, till the God of heaven set up a kingdom. Oh, look up here at me. Let me teach this one little part. Jesus built the church here. All right. Amen. Was he not here? Yes. Was it not here? Did I not say he built the church here? Yes. Did he not build it in this part yes. of that man image? That he built it here. He said, upon this rock, I'll build my church. It was built here in this part of the man image. Yes. Hallelujah. All right. Now he says the kingdom. Hallelujah. So if the church is the kingdom and the kingdom is the church, then what's he building down here? All right. Amen. What is this down here? What 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 is 
he saying? What is this biblical phraseology here? What is he saying here? What's being built in the days of these kings? What is he setting up? If the church was built here, during the Roman Empire, then what is he building down there? The kingdom. Now, Brother Don, he was asking this, and I want to put a clincher on it real quick. Uh, in Ephesians chapter 5, we're looking at these scriptures because we look at these scriptures. Our pastor teaches them, and we look at them. Uh, in Ephesians 5, Paul said, Husbands, love your wives, even as, even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Now, what else did he say? i got to move through. Look, he said, he said that he was going to uh, build it, uh, that is, that uh, he would bring this church and he, were, he would uh, present it unto himself, a glorious church. Right? Yes. It says glorious church. Yes. So now, what is that? Uh, if the kingdom is over here and he's got a glorious church, then what is that? I believe the Lord helped me with that, Brother Don. I believe the Lord helped me with that. Yes. And, and here's, here's what he showed me. Not all of the church will go. Not, not, not all of the church will make the kingdom. Right. Not all the church will be a part of the kingdom. Amen. But what makes it through the transition will be glorious. Yes. glorious. What, what is able to make it through, what is able through discipline to make it through right. will be glorious. Now, here's, uh, here's why. Uh, uh, in Matthew, and I'm going to put this here so everybody can see. Uh, I'm not going to open it. Uh, uh, in Matthew chapter 17, Jesus has this, he takes his chosen men with him. And they're on the, uh, the mountain there. And he begins to, there was, uh, there was this glory that come upon him. There was this radiant glow that came from Christ. And it was powerful. And Peter was there. John was there. Uh, was it just two? Uh, I forget now. Uh, two or three were there. And they saw Moses. And they saw Elijah. And they saw uh, Jesus. And they saw glory that come upon them. And Jesus then, uh, Peter said, My God, he said, let's build three churches. Let's build one for Peter, one for John, and one for Christ. And Jesus said, no, no. There was a voice then spoke out. There was a voice that came and spoke out. And he said, hear my son, hear ye him. Now, there was a glory. They saw him in his kingdom glory. Everybody say kingdom glory. Kingdom glory. God let them disciples see him in his kingdom glory. Now, that's the glorious part. You will make a transition when you go from the church into the kingdom, there will be a glory that will bring that about, that will usher that in, that will bring that in, and that will bring it about. Now everybody say, praise the Lord. I want to be a part of that. Put your hands up and thank Him for this wonderful day. I'm through. Praise His wonderful name. Amen. Amen. All right. How many have enjoyed the day? Enjoy the Bible teaching. I hope we can add something to you today. I hope the Lord give you give you something uh, that um, that you could uh, you could put your teeth in. I hope that I was able to minister not just life but life. That was my my goal today is to minister life uh, to the family of God. So I love you. And I don't know. We could sing, but I think we're past lunch now. And, um, I think wisdom tells me let the people eat, and uh, I, I just uh, I just think that uh, God gave us a good day. He gave us inspiration anyway, and uh, I'm thankful to see what God has done. I'm glad to see our new people in, in the back. Come still coming from Michigan? You get along all right over there? Amen. Everything okay, brother? And um, glad the Lord let you settle in, your, your dear wife. We want you to activate. We're not one to call on you all the time. Just be led. If you have a song tonight, be good if you'd get it. Be good if you'd sing. Get in. And um, as some people asked me about, about their family, the brother wants to give him a suit. I said, fine. Well, we can give him a suit. You can, you can bless God's people. You can, you can help God's people. How many want to see God's people improve on every level and see them come up? I, I do. 
I, I do. I, uh, I personally, uh, uh, I came here with just one pair of pants and one shirt when I moved to Bremen. Thank you. That was all I had. And uh, I have now several suits that God's honored me with. But God will give you his clothes. He'll give you He'll give you socks. He'll give you what you need. You just honor him. You love him. You worship him. You give him your life, and he'll make a way for you. All right. So let's stand our feet. I want to welcome Brother James back to Florida. He stayed here for a while. He's here with us. And, uh, and uh, we have, I want you, the, uh, the sister, uh, the aunt to the little girl. What's her name, Brother Pete? Help me. Janie, Sister Janie? Jada. Jada? Wait, who's, uh, which, which one's Jada? Are you Emma? Your grandma. Well, good. Everybody needs a grandma. Uh, all right. Grandma and Jada, uh, we want you to eat first. We want you to come in our dining room. Huh? Okay, yes, okay. Well, I want the whole family to stay and eat with us today, all right? Uh, we prepared a special meal, and we'd love to have you eat with us. Uh, we welcome you. Uh, maybe somebody can help them. And let's let the new new faces go first today. Brother James, I'm glad to see you come back from Tennessee. Always good to see you come home. You and your mother, good to see you. And anybody here for the first time, we don't want to overlook anybody. Is anybody here for the first time? All right. All right. Let's put our hands up and let's ask him, Lord, we thank you for the day. We thank you for the mercy of God over us today. Thank you for the power of God demonstrated in your spirit and in your word. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done, how you've helped us and strengthened us today. Bless the families. Encourage us, Lord, as we eat in the dining room. Touch the, those that labor. We thank you for the folks that work in the kitchen. Give their best and give their all, Lord. In Jesus' wonderful name. And everybody said, Amen. Let the handicapped go first. Let the aged